21st century has begun. You came to fight me, Avengers? Here I am. Hello, welcome to another first rating video. I'm doing this for my computer camera today. Um, as you saw the first uh, 10 seconds before, a little clip of Kang. Avenger Earth Mightiest Hero, I think that's the name of the series that Marvel put out uh, in 2010 and 2011 that lasted two seasons. It is my favorite Avenger cartoon of all time. Okay, I had seen just about all the Avengers cartoons out there and I felt that that series is the best. Unfortunately, it was canceled after two years. I'm not sure what the reason was. Um, I'm never sure of... One of the reasons could be it's not enough people watching. But other than that, often when uh, one of my favorite cartoon series get canceled, I don't understand why. But... Kang was introduced in season one of that series and it was fantastic. The origin is not um, the same as the comic books, okay? But it's one of those revision that I really like and enjoy. And for those that have Netflix, I highly recommend that you watch season one and season two is only two seasons i believe and it's just fantastic you see the introduction of uh uh captain marvel miss marvel the kree empire the crow super crow black panther uh and then of course you have uh kang also they even uh, have a uh, beta ray bill you know it's uh quite uh, a lot of stuff. I, I think one of the reasons why Marvel canceled that series, in my opinion, is that it does not line up with their cinematic universe. I'm not sure why that matters, if that is a reason. But so here is my Avengers 8, the first Kang. Uh, it's about, I say, maybe 6.5 at best. Okay, it has a lot of spine where a lot that's where the most of the flaws are that's, that's some tiny crease in there but as far as the look of kang i like it you know no doubt the later look are even cooler but for, for the look the name and, and his power here i give it four out of five i and i enjoyed it and the story was okay you know it's typical early marvel silver age you know it's a one shot kind of deal a bit too short for my liking but Definitely, if you read the story, um, I read the story and I gave it a 3 out of 5. So all for two, so altogether, you have a 7 out of 10, no doubt. If I was buying this book off the rack, I would be looking forward for his next appearance. Because in my opinion, Kang was the best early villain of the um, Avengers. You know, uh, Zemo appear in issue number six and I'm not a big fan of Zemo uh, compared to Kang you know I mean I, I don't dislike Zemo but as far as coolness and power and all that I, I thought Kang was a little bit cooler um, so here, here it is okay so next up is when it come to comic books it brought back a lot of nostalgia but another thing you know, there's, there's three things in, in for, for most of us, okay, I think we can, most of us would agree that comic books, music, movies are three of the many things that us comic collector have a lot of nostalgia. You know, music bring you back to a certain time, movies bring you back to a certain time, same thing with comic books. And when I came to America in 1981, I can tell you, I was aware of Frankenstein. I was aware of um, Dracula because I have seen their movies even when I was living in Vietnam. So that's not a new concept to me, okay? But in 1981, 
as fate has it that I discover America American comic books. The movie American Werewolf in London came out in 1981, and I remember I was not old enough to go see that movie um, at that time, but I remember seeing the pieces of clips that they show on many TV station about the, the that show the transformation at the time. I think that movie special effect was like as best as good as it can be. I I think if my recollection is right. So it, it, the, 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 the special effect work that was done in that movie got a lot of attention. It got my attention because I have never seen Werewolf. I have never heard of the concept of man and wolf combined together. So when the movie came out, it was instant fascination for me. Okay, that's, that's the best word, instant fascination. And then I had to wait until I think 84 to watch it on cable TV, HBO, and it blow my mind, okay? I love that movie. Uh, I can't say now about how much I loved that movie in 1984 when I finally have a chance to see it on cable TV. So this character, this book, years later when I bought it and know about this character in Marvel was definitely something I want to collect because uh, you know, I absolutely love werewolf more than frankenstein more than vampire no doubt i have I've, i have been a big fanboy of werewolf from that day from the day that i first lay eye on the movie american werewolf in london even back werewolf movie i would sit down and watch it i have seen all the werewolf movies i'm pretty sure i haven't missed any even the bad one uh, for, so for, for this book, um, I will save the showing the close of this book when I do the spotlight on my plug, okay? Uh, but as far as Werewolf, the character, the origin, everything, all together, I gave it an 8 out of 10. Um, you know, it's hard to give something 10 out of 10, but I, I think this book would have... Uh, Got a little bit higher score if my plug um, earlier work was you know, if, if my plug didn't start out too, so early if this was not his one of his earlier work where his skill wasn't as refined yet and I would showcase that more in his spotlight I definitely would give uh, it a, a slightly higher score like maybe a nine out of ten but it is uh, you know I give it an eight out of ten and. Four out of five for the name, the skills and the power, all that stuff is fairly high for just a common monster. But because of my bias and obsession and love for a werewolf, I give a pretty high mark for some. Some people might consider this uh, a pretty boring character, werewolf. You know, nothing special. But for me, I like it. Um, and speaking of 1984, you know, I, uh, as I pull out this book to, to plan to do the video, in 1984, uh, by now, I have moved. I have moved away from Albany, New York, and for those that, under, that know the area, I moved to Clifton Park, which is about half an hour south of Saratoga, you know, the, the horse track, the race uh, thing. We were about half an hour away from the Saratoga Raceway, with a horsey race. And by this time, I don't get to go to Albany to buy my comic book as often as I used to be able to. I used to be able to walk daily to the store, but now I live far away and I can get to the store once a month, if that. But I get my fix by going to uh, the strip mall. There's a strip mall near where we live that have a big grocery store, a pizza place, a Chinese takeout, and then there's a big drugstore. And inside the drugstore is comic books. So I go there at least once or twice a week just to browse through the rack. And for those that you know buy off the rack at the drugstore, you know what it's like. You know, you have books that have been on the rack for three, four months. You know, it's it's chaos. It's it's hard to it's a mess. As far as I'm concerned, you know, it's it's 
I never enjoy buying a book at the drugstore because it's usually a big mess and all the books are beat up and that is where I bought my very first very first copy of Spider-Man I can tell you for whatever reason Spider-Man did not appeal to me in 81 when I first started collecting I did not I don't know I can't pinpoint the reason but it just didn't caught my eye didn't caught my attention so you know I never paid that much attention to Spider-Man uh, about the only Spider-Man book that I remember reading was the origin of Spider-Man and uh, you know these kind of books you know I have a lot of these uh, reprint that Marvel put out but I this, these are I bought later but you know back in the old days I used to go to the library the public library to read them but so about the only time that I read Spider-Man was you know the or origin from Amazing Fantasy 15 in that kind of books and in 1984, when I stumbled across this cover, I thought it looked pretty cool. The for, 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 for some strange reason, the black costume really appealed to me, and I'm just like, wow, hmm, maybe I will start buying some Spider-Man. You know, this looks interesting. Um, as you can see, it's a, it has a new stand because this is my copy that I bought years ago. It has, you can see, a lot of wears on the spine, but this book was already this bad on the rack so I remember flipping through the rack to find the best copy and this is about as good you know it's about an 8.0 uh, I kept it this way all these years but uh, it was never near mint from the first time I paid 60 cents for it um, so I give the look you know everything about his power his look his name a, a 4 out of 5 I, I dig the black costume Okay, I enjoyed it, and as far as the story, I gave it a three. You know, it was okay. You know, it's, it's like I said, the the looks appealed to me more than the story itself. But the story was okay. Uh, so I gave it a seven out of ten. But it definitely was interesting enough that I start collecting Spider Man. So that's the one big change in nineteen eighty four was for the first time I'm buying Spider Man, and I'm kind of glad I did. Because then, you know, a few years later when Todd McFarlane hit the scene, I was able to get those issues and enjoy his art and see his rise to stardom. Um, but so this book have a lot of, uh, have somewhat special meaning to me as far as, you know, for Spider-Man book. Um, um, I have since bought, you know, a higher grade copy for myself to satisfy my thirst for a high grade book. But... That is it, my friend. That's the last book of this video. And thanks for watching. Um, until next time. Bye-bye.